Well, today I'm going to have some fun with a glass wine bottle. And I think you could do this, what I'm going to do, with any shape bottle. Now, I'm not doing any cutting. You'll be pleased to know today of this wine bottle, even though I do love the cutting. But what I'm going to do, first of all, is run some of this quite good painter's tape all the way around the bottle and make sure that is adhered to that bottle really really well because I find by using painter's tape on the bottle first it gets a much better grip I just find that whatever else I now put on this will stick really well and now that's covered I've gone over it twice with the masking tape and what I'm going to do now is spray it with some plastic primer I mean you can miss out this step if you want but I just find it seals up your masking tape really really well well that's all lovely and dry now and it's sealed that on there really well and it's made it so much easier for the next stage that I want to do. And how I got this idea was I was playing around with this cardboard box and it had this little pull bit off so you could open it and it's just an envelope you get stuff from Amazon and I folded it up and I made a little door with it while I was on the phone to one of my friends. So I thought, oh do you know what, I could use that for something. So what I'm going to do is add that little door onto here and then decorate it around this little door and turn it into a fun little one stem vase. Probably for one of my paper flowers, I think. I'm also going to want a roof that comes over the top of this as well. And all I'm going to do is use my compass here, cut out my roof. I'm going to try with my little blade here that is designed to cut in circles or different shapes rather than a straight blade. So now I've cut out the circles, I've also cut out a corner bit from it as well and then all I need to do is push the seam together and run some hot glue down there to join that seam up and then hold that together while it dries and then to put the top on it's going to quickly draw around that and then cut that bit out and then that should fit over the top of that bottle my little roof but I think I need to make it a little bit bigger than that I don't think it's big enough so I'm actually going to make another one and do exactly the same size but that hangs over a little bit more. So that's a much better size roof now that I've got hanging over there. This bit obviously is going to be the chimney pot. What I'm going to do is get some more cardboard and then cut some shingles for this roof. Now they're going to be fairly easy to cut. I am going to cut them at an angle and I'm going to do them in strips this time as opposed to individually. That's the shape I'm going to have going off at an angle. And I'll probably need oh, quite a few of these. I've cut all me tiles out or what will be my tiles but before I go ahead and do that what I'm going to do is just run some hot glue around this top here to doubly secure it on here because at the moment it's only attached by friction. So what I'm going to do now is start going around and putting me tiles on. So I've got all my lengths cut out here. So I need to put the bottom ones on first and then work up to the top so they overlap. Cut one and then all the rest are going to be off that one. And then I'm going to use some white school glue, glue these on with. Put a little bit on there like that, overlap it and then pop it on. You could use hot glue if you want for this, but I like the school glue because it gives me that bit of being able to move them about for a few seconds once I've got it on. And I'm going to work all the way around the bottom edge and then I'll come to the next layer. So they're all stuck, the first row, and now all I've got to do is stick the next row on. And what I've done is I've just cut another length off of here. Cover them in glue. Then I'm going to put those on so they overlap like that, going all the way around. Well, the roof's all on now and drying away. And I've made a little round window and a little triangle window, and I'm going to put those on. But before I do that, I need to put this door on where I want it all this door frame and I am going to be using hot glue gum for this because it will stick a lot quicker and it will stay in place as well before I do anything else I'm going to go over this all now and paint it with some PVA glue and this is a waterproof PVA glue and what it'll do is help to waterproof the cardboard ready for the next stage I shall also go inside and do that inside as well. That's all nice and dry now and that has really given it a lot more strength. What I'm going to do now is take a sharp knife and go around and remove 
the tape from the inside of the windows and you'll see why towards the end of the project. Once you've cut round it, it should remove fairly easily. I've cut all those out now and I'm ready to put the rest of the texture onto this. What I'm going to use is my paper clay, of course, and if you want to know how to make my paper clay, then the recipe is on my website. It's free of charge to download. And it's a great paper clay. I use it all the time for lots of different things, as you've probably seen on my channel. To make sure I get a good adhesion, what I'm going to do first is paint some normal PVA glue onto this bottle. Now, wherever I want the paper clay to go. So it's nice and wet. Well, not wet, but nice and sticky there. Take my paper clay. I want it to be quite textured. And then all I'm doing is pushing that onto there where I've put that. If I want to smooth it out a bit more, I can by dipping my finger in a little bit of water and then smoothing it out. But I don't want it too smooth because I do want this to look stone-like once it's finished. Now you only need a very thin layer of this. Well, that's nice and coated now and all I've got to do is actually put the brick pattern in and that's really easy to do. Now over the door, I want to do a slightly different pattern as if it's got like a, a proper block like that going over. So all I'm doing is putting that pattern in to give it a little bit of interest really. So that's the texture I've got going around the door. So that's the sort of effect that I want to get all the way round. And now that's all finished. I'm really pleased with how that's looking. And what I'm going to do is stick that in my tumbler dryer to cure. Bowl's all dry now and it's dried really well. So what I'm going to do is paint that. But before I paint that, I need to cast some little flowers and things to put around it. And I'm going to cast these in resincrete because I know resincrete, once it's fully cured, is much harder than Plaster Paris or any of those things. And it's so much easier to paint. And I'm going to do a large variety and then decide from there which ones I'm going to do. While they're drying, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this. Before I start doing anything on that roof, I'm going to darken my red down by sticking some black in it. I'm sure there's much better ways to darken your red down, but that's the way I like to do it. It makes like a muddy brown colour, I think. I don't really know, to be perfectly honest. And then paint my roof. And I'm going to paint my whole roof in that colour, both inside and out. And then I will put some lighter colours over the top and dry brush it. And this is my little fantasy house for my little gnome that's going to live in the house. So it can be whatever colours I want it to be. Or it could be for a fairy. Although there's probably enough fairies living in my house. I've mixed up a slightly, well, quite a bit lighter now colour. And I'm going to go all over this roof. Making sure that I cover virtually everywhere. Because that dark paint I put on there is for all the crevices. And to create a bit of shadow underneath and around as well. To give it a bit more texture. Now that's dry, what I can do is go over with the bright red and again probably give that a couple of coats to lighten that up and then I'll go over it with an orange, quite a bright orange. And that's really starting to bring out that texture in that roof and all those different colours as well. And the roof's finished now, I love that, and all it needs is a varnish, and that will get that right at the very end. And what I'm going to do now is do the undercoat for the bricks. I'm going around, and I'm putting some colours on, random patterns all the way through through and I'm using red some blue and some yellow and some white and then when I put the wash on hopefully some of these colors are still going to show through and make it look as if the bricks are made from stone that have got lots of different colors in them. I've got all my colors on now and I've also gone in and highlighted all like the grout or the pointing areas in white and I've mixed up a grey and it's a very watery grey because like I said I still want some of those colors once it dries to shine through and also that white a little bit there to shine through as well. Go over the whole thing with one coat and then let it dry and see what it looks like and if it needs another coat of a light colour then I'll do that. I will do some dry brushing on it as well with some white and a lighter grey just to bring out some of the highlights and the texture. It's all painted now. I think it looks really quite cute. I've done the windows in black frames and I've highlighted around the door and it's got a red brick chimney. 
all my flowers are painted and done and I've made a little door but what I want to do now is put some windows in. Now I bought this a long time ago which is frost effect and to be honest it is absolute load of rubbish. So I haven't been able to use it but it is, well that's not fair that it is a load of rubbish. It is good for a few things and I'm hoping it's going to be good for this because I want to frost the glass behind the stained glass first and I think this will be ideal for it. Probably going to give it a couple of coats, let it dry and it's designed for glass so that's fine. Well I'm ready to put my stem on here and add my flowers. Before I do that though what I'm going to do is draw it on or sketch it on lightly so that I'm happy with where it's going to go before I paint it on. Because if I paint it on straight away, I know what I will do. I will mess it up first of all. And then what I can do is I can varnish all this. I'm only going to coat the house in a satin varnish, but the actual plants and all that themselves, I'm going to do in quite a glossy varnish. So I can now paint this stem on here. So that's that. And now what I'm going to do is do some slightly darker leaves. And then add my leaves on here. I can add leaf there. And then just go around and add some leaves. And then when I add these ones, which I will glue on, you'll have some that are two-dimensional and some that are three-dimensional. Well, while that's all drying now, what I can do is get on with my stained glass windows. And I've cut out here, as you can see, some pieces of acetate. So just some thin pieces of acetate. And how I'm going to make these is I'm going to divide them into four each of the windows and then put a different colour of this like I love this it feels so nice into each of the corners I'm going to be using these coffee stirrers and I'm going to split them down in the middle or roughly in the middle like that and they cut ever so easy and that is what I'm going to use to divide my windows up with. And I've found the best glue to stick wood to acetate is this all-purpose glue. It dries clear anyway, so if you get any overspill, it doesn't matter. I'll pop a little bit on, and then pop a little bit on the back of those, like that. And then I can put that down in there. And that'll stick there really, really well. And then all I have to do is decide where my cross bits are gonna go, and stick them on, like that. And I'll use the same glue as I use for the cross bits to also stick this on with as well. But before I do that, I'm going to paint all these little cross beams black because I want them black. It's all finished now. I'm really loving it. I hope you like it as much as I do. The flowers on it came out really well. I put a little door on it and you can really see how well that's come out. Little tulips going all the way around the bottom and then the vine with some of its leaves coming out and some not because they weren't all three dimensional leaves but I think it's come out really pretty. And the other great thing is with all the stained windows, it lights up. All the little lights have got stained glass in them. Make a beautiful little night light for any child, I think. Hope you've enjoyed watching this project as much as I've enjoyed making it. I have loved every minute of making this project. You know what? I could make 10 or 20 more of these, all different, just for the fun of it. It was so much fun. Even light comes out the bottom as well. Because I didn't cover the bottom. We might see another one coming up in a few months time. Where I've decided to do something slightly different. If you want to know how to make those paper flowers. I'll link that video at the end of this one. Boot that like button if you've enjoyed this video. It really helps my videos to get out there. And share it as much as you can. If you've not subscribed hit that subscribe button. I'll link everything that I use in the description below. Take care. Enjoy your crafting as much as I love my crafting. Bye.